Hello, my name is John Harold, and I will be talking about the harmful effects of drug prohibition on the perception of addiction. The drug war has only created a war that has no victors and only victims. Much like Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, just like Alice, America has stepped through the looking glass and is in a new era. Addiction is not what it seems, and this led me to my research question. Has the prohibition of drugs inserted an image of debauchery into the general public, creating a misconception that they are negatively altered, bad for your environment, and blowing the facts out of proportion, and creating irrational, unwarranted fears? Using a social, historical, and psychological lens, this led to my thesis. Since the beginning of the war on drugs, the government has fueled a misconception that all drugs are harmful and should be eradicated, as well as all who they use them. This leads to my first claim, the ostracization of addicts. Bruce K. Alexander, a psychiatrist for 30 years at Simon Fraser University, writing exclusively about addiction, has talked to many different addicts in the city of Vancouver, a city full of drugs and drug problems. One addict told him, this is a life. It is better than no life. He said this because he fully admitted that he had been committing crimes to get drugs. But he knew that if he didn't do that, he would not feel human. He would feel like he didn't matter. And this is what most addicts feel in this society. Johan Hari, a British journalist and writer of Chasing the Screen, traveled around the world to talk about the cause, the real cause, of addiction. He even interviewed Bruce K. Alexander. Bruce K. Alexander told him when he was little, he read a Batman comic where Batman watched as a group of criminals killed one junkie, and he did nothing. When he asked his father about this, his father replied, it's because they are worthless human beings. In schools, we are taught that drugs are bad. We are usually never taught the benefits of multiple drugs. However, recently, we have been learning about medicinal marijuana. Usually, we only hear what will go wrong with drugs. What does this do to an addict's mind when all around them, all they hear is that they and the drugs that they use are bad? It makes them think that they are less than human. And this has created a stigma towards addicts. My next claim is about the social environment affecting the addicts more than the drugs themselves. Um, in Vietnam, war veterans, about 20% of them, all came and they became addicted to heroin. Bruce K. Alexander finally did an experiment on this called Rat Park, because he noticed that they came back and almost none of them were addicted. They all lost their addiction. So, he had a cage full of a bunch of rats. They had water, things to play with, food. They could become families, friends, and they had cocaine. When he did this, he noticed that none of them even wanted to try cocaine, compared to other experiments where it was a rat getting addicted to cocaine. The difference was the environment with the rat. The rats who got addicted only had the cocaine in themselves. When they were in the rat park, they had people and rats who cared about them. This can be applied directly to today with Portugal. Portugal is the only country who has completely decriminalized all drugs. What's happened there? Addicts are no longer scared of who they are. And it's an environment where people care. They've got social outreach to tell the addicts that they matter. And it's really led to a better place in Portugal. The third and final claim are the fiscal effects of drug prohibition. According to the Drug Policy Alliance, an alliance trying to find more equality in the world of drugs, they found that over half of all persons in, uh, incarcerated in the United States, almost uh, more than half of them, are incarcerated for nonviolent drug offenses. Nonviolent is the key word here. They've done nothing wrong against other people, only themselves, because they have a personal problem and they need help. This all goes into the stigma. Soon they are punished, and for the rest of their lives, they'll have a criminal record where they cannot find good jobs, and they will be forced to return to the drugs, creating a vicious cycle. Not everybody believes that Bruce K. Alexander and Johan Hari are correct in their thinking. Katie McBride, a writer for The Outline, believes that with Bruce K. Alexander's Rat Park experiment and Johan Hari's book, Chasing the Scream, all of their findings and evidence were flawed and oversimplified. She says that cocaine and other drugs are still just as dangerous as they were before, and it is not going to get better with these kinds of approaches like decriminalization and legalization. However, this is not true. There have been multiple other rat park-like experiments with other drugs, such as meth, weed, PCP, and others. They have all had the same effect, where the rats do not get addicted. What this means is that everything we know about addiction is wrong. Arthur Schlesinger Jr., a uh, famed historian and author of His uh, History as Participate, in his, argue, in his article, he argued that history is different depending on where you are. This is completely true for drug prohibition and the drug war. Somebody who has never seen drugs before, or has never seen people who use drugs, 
has a completely different mindset than those who have. And it, this changes as soon as you witness that. The experience that you have with drugs will change your stance completely. Some of my plausible solutions include the, the decriminalization, the legalization, and the regulation of drugs. Selling drugs and narcotics just like tobacco and alcohol would lead to less drug use altogether, and it would make a safer America. There has to be more social outreach towards drug addicts too. This would include the same way as the Portugal approach, where we need to get out there and spread the word through better education in schools and just in our all-around basic life that drugs and drug users are not monsters. Finally, we need to take the four-pillar approach, such as Vancouver did. The four-pillar approach is the treatment of drug addicts, the prevention of drug use, enforcement of drug laws, and the reduction of harm from drugs. We will start with the treatment of drug addicts. We need to stop incarcerating nonviolent drug addicts and ruining their lives forever. This goes into the reduction of harm for drug users. Instead of incarcerating them, we should help them with their addiction. We should have free, clean needle clinics who will be able to super and doctors who will be able to supervise them and make sure that they are able to wean themselves off their own addiction. The enforcement of drug laws goes into both the social outreach and the current drug laws. Just like alcohol and tobacco today, if you break laws or give them to underage people, you will be completely punished. This still needs to happen. However, it needs to be not as severe unless they break the new, newly written laws. Prevention of drug use goes into the public schooling. We need to inform people that not all drugs are bad, and they are only bad if they are unregulated and uncontrolled. There are always some limitations to solutions. And this includes many people would not want to pay taxes to save human lives because it just makes them pay more money because they would not be able to see the full picture. A lot of people don't want to change their views on the drug laws either. Many people will take a long time before they realize that even the hardest of drugs are not as dangerous as they seem. However, doing this will cause America to step back through the looking glass and be into a better place. Legalizing drugs, caring for addicts, and ending the drug war would make America better. It would send America into a better age, an age of peace and prosperity, and an age without addiction or the drug war. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, two questions for you. Uh, the first one, um, how valid and reliable are the sources you've used, and how do you know? So my main two sources were Dr. Bruce K. Alexander and Johan Hart. Bruce K. Alexander went to, uh, teaches at Simon Fraser University and has been teaching about addiction and researching addiction for the past 30 years. He is the creator of Rat Park and many other experiments, and also is one of the leading causes as to why Vancouver no longer has drug problems. Johan Hari wrote the book Chasing the Screen. In this book, he went thousands of miles from his homeland of England all the way back to here, America, Portugal, South America, and Canada, all studying drugs and addiction. He found that everything that they had thought about addiction was wrong. Through the political system of America, to the dark and dangerous corners of the worst places in Vancouver, which seems like an oxymoron, but it's true, to back in South America, he was able to study addiction and realize that we need to change everything. Okay. It was through their personal experience and other people's findings that they are credible. Thanks. Uh, the second question then, how did you use the conclusions and questions of others to advance your research? Well, I already knew that I wanted to do drug prohibition as my topic, but after reading Chasing the Screen by Yohan Hari and seeing that addiction is not really the cause of the drug war, it's more the opposite, I realized that I needed to advance my own research by learning more about addiction. So I went from my topic of drug prohibition to more specifically about addiction. And then I read Bruce K. Alexander's book, The Globalization of Addiction, A Study of Poverty and the Spirit. And I started learning about how addiction really shouldn't be looked at as an individual problem but more of a social problem and a global problem. He talks about how a free market approach to the world affects people's personal connections with each other, and this in turn creates more addiction. Through the theory of dislocation, which is when people cannot um, associate with other humans, they find something else to have that connection, there being the drugs. Okay, all right, well thank you.